old boom tube this week. Quiet my bed, quiet. Once again, here we are. Coming to you live on tape from a secret location hidden somewhere deep in the bowels of downtown St. John's Newfoundland in the Library of Graphic Literature. With your host, Wallace Ryan. So, a windy, windy, windy uh, week out here on the East Coast. It gets so windy out here, like I say, we get trucks blown off the road. And although I'm not sure if any were blown off the road this week, they definitely slowed down enough so that uh, we only got our new books in today and that's why uh, the show was delayed until today. So with uh, no further ado, let us get down to it here. Okay, take off the peepers. Now what do we have here? First up here from first second books comes Dio Gratis. A Tale of Rwanda um, by J.P. Stassen. Uh, I didn't know uh, anything besides the fact that J.P. Stassen is from uh, Belgium, but I'm, of course, I'm interested in uh, world events and politics. And when I seen this little thing about uh, having to do with uh, Rwanda, I figured, hey, give it a shot. I'm trying to do it by uh, move into more and more graphic novels these days and stuff like that so you know uh, you know beyond the superhero realm I'm trying to really fit, fill out the library and this looked pretty good so uh, check it out folks the the artwork is actually really cool very well done Check it out. So yeah, this looks like it's going to be a good read. Probably not a, probably not very uplifting, but it's probably going to be a good read. Uh, let's see what else do we have here. Ooh, 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 ooh. Next here from the stack comes Volume Three from Boom Studios. Comes do 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 giant a. Not on the test edition, basically, volume three. Um, from John Allison, Liz Fleming, Max Aaron, Whitney Cogar. Um, I'm still on the first book, as a matter of fact, but uh, I absolutely loved it. The, it's one of those great character-driven driven books. Um, and uh, yeah, I can't, I can't re recommend it enough. Uh, I actually do have to sort of get back at it and try to catch up to up to date sometimes I do get behind on my reading as a matter of fact sometimes so much that I have to go online and look up uh, basically uh, uh, just look up the, the books like and look up for some uh, uh, you know I've found on some sites you can find uh, recaps of what's got, gone on before so I look for those and I reread just read up to wherever I am and then uh, take off reading again but yeah, here, have a close look. I love the art style. The art's pretty good, but the stories are well worth it. Very, like I say, very character-centered. And just a really, there's a real atmosphere to it of just fun and, and a little bit of mystery thrown in there. But yeah, i got to catch up on my giant days reading. But yeah, check that out, folks. Well worth reading. Okay, now let's see here. Oh yes, of course. What would be a week of books in the, in the uh, graphic literature world without a book from the Library of American Comics? Boom, 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 boom. And this one is Little Orphan Annie, Volume Fifteen. And yes, I do have all the other ones. And as a matter of fact, with this one. With this book, once again, I now have a complete set of the Library of American Comics. But yeah, uh, they are the premier uh, 
publishers in terms of comic strips and sort of historic stuff. They do an amazing job. They, uh, the printing is very well done. Uh, there's a uh, great opening, uh, introductory essays written, lots of information too in them. Uh, once again, I, and I've talked about Little Orphan Annie before when I, when I first started collecting Library of American Comics books, this was one of them. And, and I looked at Little Orphan Annie and I guess I was thinking in terms of Annie, the movie and the play and all that. And, you know, I'd known something of uh, Little Orphan Annie, but not much. But I figured, okay, I'll, I'll get the first volume and, and just as an example or whatever. But then I read it and it was just like, the first volume was just like, these, these comic strips are, are, are amazing. It was just like, there was adventure, uh, it was it was it was unreal. It was it was unlike it wasn't like what I was thinking at all. It was lots of twists and turns and and like I say, uh, Little Orphan Annie is is pretty cool. So I highly recommend it to anyone out there. And here you can have a quick look. Here I love it. I do love actually his his use of black and white too, and his color strips too. Or I guess they have a real mood to them. It's so unlike most comic strips. In some ways, there's, even though Chester Gould is completely different and all that, there's, there's something that sort of reminds me of each other. But definitely, really, really worth uh, checking out. I'm not sure. I'm assuming, as far as I know, I think all it's most of these volumes are still in print. But yeah, it's definitely worth checking out at some point. I have a close in look. But yeah, the Lower Fernandy, volume 15. I've decided that uh, coming up soon, I'm actually going to start, I'm going to go right from the very start of my collection of the Library of American Comics, and I'm going to go through and I'm going to try to read every single book. I've read a lot of it, a lot of them, but there are a couple of series that I've fallen behind. I've read all the Dick Tracy, but I haven't liked with the Little Orphan Annie, and there were a few others too, but for the most part I generally try to read any book I buy. I don't like to buy just for the, just for the buying. And speaking of just for the buying, uh, this week from the fine, fine folks at DC Comics comes Wonder Woman, do 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 do, Omnibus Volume 3. Let's pop this. Baby open hair. Come on. I love uh, DC's new line of omnibuses, by the way. They're, uh, I mean, it, it sort of reminds me in some weird way of the uh, of the DC archives. They kept the, the same look throughout all of them. And, and as you can see up behind me there, they they look they look great up on uh, up on a set of shelves. So this is, of course. Uh, Still being done by, ooh, hear that crack, by Moulton, uh, with Joy Murchison and Robert Kennecker, and of course all the art being provided by Harry G. Peter. Uh, when I was when I was younger, of course I, you know, just I never got Peter. I thought that the when I first read him, I, you know, being a kid from the six, from the seventies reading, well, of the sixties and seventies reading something from the 30s from 30 years ago which when I think of it now it's kind of funny but I mean the uh, it was a kind of a strange style but as I got older there was something about Peter Starr that just really attracted me and and, and I and I'm a big Wonder Woman fan anyway from the early 70s I even I actually even liked the new Wonder Woman when she lost her powers I know there are a lot of people who didn't like that but uh, uh, I did you know. <laughs> I mean, it was cool when she got her powers back and stuff like that, and and there've been a few good series here and there. Uh, George Perez's Wonder Woman was good, and and uh, lately the uh, the Azarello Wonder Woman, some of the best one Wonder Woman I think ever, actually. And of course, it was a movie. <laughs> well, let's have a close in look here on on it now. Of course, there's here we have a look there. Of course, there's all kinds of uh, 
themes of uh, let's see now here if we can find any scenes of bondage I'm not sure if they, uh, they did as much back I think I think they were starting to tame them a bit around this point but yeah there's just something about his style that's oh there we go <laughs> there's just something about Peter's style that just I don't know it just adds a certain golden age feel to the to the whole process so if you're a Wonder Woman fan uh, check it out anyway even just to the one thing I like it re about reading Golden Age books and all that is as much for the comics themselves as as from the hi the historic uh, uh, point of view. I look I look at the books that I read and I read you know, I like to read about because you can see societal mores and and things in the background. Uh, <clears throat> you can tell a lot about an age by by their comics and uh, so like I said I like reading them I like to see the themes that they're talking about and and you know in certain decades certain themes sort of ran through just about all comics in the 30s and 40s well it was war crime uh, horror well towards the end anyway but I mean you know every <clears throat> every era has 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 something to say and that's why I love reading it just I mean even even if it's even just to see the attitudes in terms of racial issues uh, gender issues stuff like that the way the way that things were treated back then and just people's attitudes it's it's, it's fascinating that's why I'm glad that a lot of times that they print comics but they don't uh, censor them they don't take take out the uh, you know the, the stuff that today a lot of people find reprehensible because it's to me I, I, I like to see history unburnished I like to see how it was because there's so much about these comics that tell us about life back then now let's move on from way back then to oh, right up to practically to today's uh, and now this is do, 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 absolute metropolitan dun, 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 from Warren Ellis Derek Robertson and Rodney Ramos I uh, this is volume three which I do believe is the fi final final volume uh, I love uh, DC absolute editions um, as I've said many times great production values uh, beautifully designed I mean everything about them is is top-notch that's why I love seeing these just because there's there's always something very very nice about them. I like I love the slip cases are really cool the and even the like I say the printing of the books themselves there's in some of them there's really some really uh, cool stuff well it's like with the Sandman ones inside they had a one of the opening leaves was actually a piece of a transparent piece of paper uh, fine paper and I anyway and it just added a really nice feel to the entire book <gasps> hear that crack here we go, yeah. Crack, 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 crack. But yeah, I'm of course a big uh, Warren Ellis fan, so I mean, uh, now that I got this one, I'll, uh, I'm actually going to go back and I'm going to grab all the the earlier episodes and I'm going to have a, uh, going to have a look. Let's see. So a little bit of a tear there. Um, <clears throat> Check it out. I love this, these slipcases too. Oh. Let's have a closer look. Well, here's the cover with a cool wraparound on oh, no. Yeah, Trans Metropolitan. Uh, like I say, I, I'm a fan of uh, Alice anyway, but a friend of mine. Uh, Bill Bill Haynes here in St. John's kept raving about it and told me that I had to had to pick up this this one. So I actually did pick it up and I've read part of Volume One and I actually really like it. So I'm uh, I'm really really looking forward to uh, giving this a really good read. Oh, and some cool stuff, of course. As you all know, I love the stuff in the backs. 
So once again, DC hits it out of the park with another super cool Absolute Edition. Absolutely beautiful. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Slide it back in very carefully. Always very careful with my books. Oh, and last but not least, um, uh, from the back order file. Um, back order file, like I say, I, I like. To, I'm going to use to feature, say, some books that I either picked up recently, older books and stuff like that, uh, just to share with you some some of my likes. This is a a book I I. Uh, as most of you who've watched this show before know, I'm a huge Mobius fan, and I found out about this. This was a cool edition of uh, the Garage Hermetic or the Airtight Garage from uh, from Mobius, the Airtight Garage of Jerry Cornelius, to be exact. And of course, I, I had uh, I have a smaller version of this, but when I'd seen the bigger version, I just had to have it. So. So I picked this one up, and uh, it's it's a beautiful, it's a work of beauty. Like I say, the, the Garage Hermetic is probably one of my favorite Mobius stories. I think this and Arizak, and, and Inko, I guess. Well, I guess all of them. But this one, it does really hold a special place in my heart, because this was this is one I followed in the 70s uh, when Heavy Metal first came out. And of course, I was a heavy metal f fanatic and uh, I fell, fell in love with Mobius and this was actually, this and Arzak were, were the were the strips that made me fall in love with him. Oh. Let me check this out. Amazing, amazing art and the pages, pages are very heavy pages. They're just for a close up. The, he the pages are very heavy stock too which is kind of cool but yeah an absolute epic of, of Mobius's I love the simple black and white there was uh, when Marvel did the the Mobius books in the uh, 90s they colored this but I know I still preferred uh, in black and white because it's well it was made in black and white it's like to me that's kind of like colorizing film now sometimes it works bone it actually worked okay oh here we go this was always one of my favorite scenes here but yeah absolutely amazing now this one of course is all in French but I don't particularly care because my the other uh, the other copy I had was also all in French uh, but I've read the, the comic dozens of times so uh, when I'm reading it now, I can I can actually I know what's been said anyway. So uh, yeah, it was just a beautiful little uh, book and just had to pick it up. And thanks to uh, you, Dennis, for uh, helping me uh, find this. Dennis Osborne, my fellow Omnipal. Okay, well uh, oh, let's give that his. I wonder if there's. And I was thinking about even starting to. Someone suggested about doing, uh, picking uh, comics from my spinner rack and talking about them. And uh, I think I might do that in the future. But what I'll do is probably see if there's any one that's here. I pick it and see if I actually have it in print. Whew. That being said, um, I think that's it for this week. Once again, it's been lots and lots of fun. It's only a couple of weeks away now from my big secret announcement. Doom, 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 what can it be? What is Wallace holding back? Doom, 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 doom. So a couple of things actually coming down the pipe, having to do with the creed of the end of my business. But I'll let you know then. In the meantime... Yes, yes, no, a boom tube. Get me a boom tube. It's like it's like an Uber, right? Oh, there it is. Oh my God, it's a nice big red one. Anyway, thanks, folks. Keep on reading. Bye. Ah!